so happy we alive. And welcome to Louisville Late Night. This evening it's uh, a real joy and an honor to uh, have with me someone who's a scholar and uh, someone, an individual, who's making and who I believe will make in the future a tremendous impact. Um, his name is Rick Doblin. He's the founder of an organization uh, abbreviated as MAPS. Rick is a uh, scholar, a philanthropist, a compassionate individual. He, uh, I'm not even going to, to attempt to, uh, to uh, say, uh, I don't even have time to begin to say all the different things that Rick's involved in. But one thing is, and I'll say this as having uh, uh, worked in psychiatry for a number of years, as anyone knows, psychiatry has to do with the unconscious and the human mind and human potential and all of that. And uh, back in the 60s, there was tremendous interest in the, in the potential of uh, therapeutic effects of psychedelics. And, uh, and there was that whole thing uh, that happened uh, where uh, they were touted as the uh, uh, savior of uh, mankind and so forth like that. And then there was the opposite side, which was a terrible thing. Uh, LSD, for example, Art Linkletter's uh, daughter, I believe, uh, committed suicide, and and so the psychedelic uh, uh, phenomena is uh, something that's very highly charged, uh, and uh, understandably so. And and so, <laughs> to say the least, it's a it's a hard topic to even to even touch, and. Uh, uh, that's why it's nice to uh, be able to talk to some people, uh, such as uh, Rick Doblin, who uh, are committed to discovering and revealing the truth about uh, psychedelics and uh, helping people be educated as to uh, what, uh, you know, just, just what's going on in that whole area. And then the, the, the best part of it to me is, as somebody who's, who's spent a lot of time in academics is uh, uh, Rick Doblin is really a bridge to the to academic community. And uh, unlike, uh, oh, you go back 15 or 20 years, uh, many researchers would not uh, touch or were too fearful to even talk about uh, the subject uh, or many subject that uh, Rick Doblin uh, is involved with, and uh, I'm going to shut up and uh, introduce you here to Rick Doblin. Rick, thank you so much for for being here, and thank you for all of the the great work that I know that you've done that I am not uh, elucidating on, <laughs> because uh, I want to uh, find out more about maps and and just you know what what it is and uh, how it's relevant to you know to people back in Louisville, Kentucky. Well, thank you. And how they can find out about it. On the internet? Yeah, well, certainly MAPS is Multidisciplinary Association for Psychedelic Studies, and it's www.maps.org, and we have quite a lot of information up on the website. Um, I'm very grateful to be able to be here and to have the opportunity to talk to your audience. When, when did MAPS start? When did, when did you put it together? Uh, 1986 is when I started it. I'd previously been working as part of the psychedelic underground who had uh, been exploring psychedelics for psychotherapeutic purposes and MDMA had been quite popular as a tool for psychedelic psychotherapy from the mid-70s to the early 80s and it and MDMA is also known as, as ecstasy, as ecstasy. Yeah. and so it, it kind of emerged uh, from the psychedelic underground and some of the people who had experience with it decided that it was a great drug that could be marketed and sold and a lot of money could be made even if it was used in a recreation or especially if it was used in a recreational context. And uh -huh. the people who were involved in using it recreationally felt that that was going to be a tragedy when it would be criminalized and taken out of the hands of 
therapist is like uh, ironically you know, a controlled drug in which it would be controlled only for the people that had legitimate use for it and all the people who are using it recreationally would be getting it in an uncontrolled way and the amount of and in fact and in fact that has been a major problem uh, uh, I'm, I, I just wanted to say here briefly is that uh, it has been a huge uh, 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 medical problem with raves that people have been getting impure ecstasy and uh, having uh, hypothermia and in fact a number of people have died and, and, and one uh, courageous and great thing that Rick Doblin has, has done is uh, underwritten and or helped facilitate uh, the testing of uh, of, uh, of of ecstasy at raves, so that people have some idea what they're getting. There's no there's no telling how much uh, good this this uh, has done. It's brilliant, compassionate, and uh, and you're a he you're a hero for that alone. And that's just a small part of uh, yeah. of what Rick has has uh, been up to. Yeah, thank you. Actually, if anybody wants to check that out on our website, there's a section on the left-hand side of the homepage. It's the Ecstasy Pill Testing Program. And if you click on that, you'll find directions. You can send in pills to be analyzed anonymously. And we've had hundreds and hundreds, over six or 700 pills have been analyzed. It costs us about $105 each pill. It's free for the person that sends it in. And, and, and then you get uh, on the website, you get information on what it was. And about half the pills are fake. And some of them have very dangerous things in them as well. Um, but I'd, I'd like to, I guess, before I go too far, just say that MAPS was started because I was involved with the lawsuit against the DEA starting in 84 when they moved to criminalize MDMA. And those of us who'd used it, been involved in the therapeutic community that had been using it, felt that now was a ripe opportunity to try to challenge the criminalization of it because we could get people to speak out who had been using it legally. The problem with psychedelics, other psychedelics right now, is it's hard to get people to endorse the therapeutic use because they're also admitting to be criminals. But at that time, it, MDMA You mean was, people using it legally in therapy or...? Right, like right now, of course, there is nobody using it legally in therapy, but prior to the time that MDMA was criminalized, it was used in a legal way. And so we were able to get a remarkable group of people who were willing to step forward, challenge the DEA, and we had administrative law judge hearings in front of Judge Francis Young with the DEA, and I helped coordinate that from 1984 to about 1986. It, later became clear that even though we would win in the administrative law judge hearings, the judge recommended that MDMA be Schedule three, which meant that doctors could use it, therapists could use it, but the head of the DEA overruled that recommendation and put it in Schedule one and took it out of the hands of doctors and of everybody. So at that point it became clear to me that the only way to really bring these drugs back into a legal context was, well, that there were two ways. One was, of course, to legalize the drug for all purposes, which since it was just criminalized, that was going to take quite a while. The other was as a medical tool to go through the FDA. And right now, the pharmaceutical companies are not interested in supporting research into the beneficial uses of marijuana or MDMA or other psychedelics. The government, the National Institute of Mental Health, they're not interested in funding these kind of studies. It's too controversial. So that we needed a source of funding. So MAPS was created in a sense as a nonprofit psychedelic and medical marijuana pharmaceutical company. And we have quite a large emphasis now on education, but that wasn't the initial focus. It was primarily research designed to move these drugs through the FDA regulatory system with support from the members who would donate, and then we would do the research and hopefully end up with prescription use at some point in the future. Now it's 2002, it's 16 years after I started MAPS, and we're just about to start the first study of the therapeutic use of MDMA for the treatment of post-traumatic stress disorder. So it's a slow going, much slower than I expected. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's basically the history of MAPS was as a psychedelic pharmaceutical company designed to develop MDMA into a prescription medicine. We've broadened other psychedelics to marijuana and have about 1,800 members, so it's a nonprofit organization. We are definitely seeking new members. And, and you have a journal? We have a quarterly bulletin that's quite impressive. All of it is also... It's very impressive. I've read it. Like, yeah. <laughs> I'm a member of MAPS. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and you can, uh, for those listeners that want to look at it, our website has all the back issues are posted for free as part of our educational mission. 